Good morning, fellow Lycians, students, teachers, employees, uh, members of the board of directors, especially our president, CEO, Dr. Danilo Viayak, and also all the members of your family, relatives and friends and neighbors and brethren. You can watch us in YouTube. Also, our Kapamilya, the Balerya, and Umalik clan, all our brothers and sisters in the Lord, in different churches, members of my family, my wife, my children, grandchildren, all our relatives and friends, both here and abroad. Of course, uh, my daughter Grace in the U.S., and friends. For our uh, morning devotion, let's start with a prayer. Let's bow our heads. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever and ever. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. By now, in these days, he has spoken to us through his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our short meditation this morning is entitled, Friends Again. And we can find this in Romans chapter 5. Okay? Romans chapter 5. Starting with verse 6 to 11. Okay. Let me read it. Okay, Romans chapter 5, verse 6 to 11. You see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man. Though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through Him? For if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to Him through the death of His Son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through His life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. So let me go through the story we have entitled Friends Again. A mother and her young daughter 
are sitting in church one day. During the service, opportunities given for people to publicly receive God's forgiveness. Every time someone walks over to do so, the little girl begins to clap. I'm so sorry, the mother later tells the church leader. I explained to my daughter that repentance makes us friends with God again. And she just wanted to cheer for every month. Simplified for a child's mind. The mother's words were a good explanation of the gospel. Once God's enemies we have been reconciled to him through Christ, death and resurrection. As I have read in Romans 5, chapter 5, verse 9 to 11. Now we are indeed God's friends, since we were the ones to break the friendship. Repentance is our part in completing the restoration process. And the little girl's response would have been more appropriate since all heaven claps when just one person repents. As we can read in Luke chapter 15, 10, she was unknowingly echoing its applause. Jesus described this reconciling work in similar terms. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. That is in John 15, 13. A result of his sacrificial act of friendship toward us, we can now be friends with him. I no longer call you servants. Instead, I have called you friends. Once God's enemies, we are now God's friends. It's an overwhelming thought and one word clapping about. For our uh, reflection on this story, number one, how often do you describe your relationship with God as one of friendship? Let me repeat that. How often do you describe your relationship with God as one of friendship? In practical terms, how is your friendship with him going today? Again, in practical terms, how is your friendship with him going today? Let me read some Bible verses found in, actually this is in the uh, Apostles' Creed, the second article, entitled, Christ's Work of Redemption or Atonement. Okay? Again, Christ's Work of Redemption or Atonement. Why did Christ humble himself? Christ voluntarily humbled himself in order to redeem us, a lost and condemned person. We can read that in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 to 5. Surely he has borne our grips and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. Let me repeat that. He was crushed for our sins, for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. Also in John chapter 10, verse 17, 18, I lay down my life that I may take it up, up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own 
upper. That is Jesus. Okay? From what has Christ redeemed you? Again. From what has Christ redeemed you? He has redeemed me from all sins. From death and from the power of the devil. Again, let me repeat that. He has redeemed me, that is Jesus, from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil. Let me read John chapter 1, verse 29. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And also in Hebrew chapter 2, verse 14 to 15 and 17. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he must destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through the fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. How has Christ redeemed you from all sins? Again, let me repeat that. How has Christ redeemed you from all sins? He took my guilt and punishment upon himself. We can find that in Romans chapter 5, verse 19. So by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Also in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, He made him to be seen who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And then in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone who is hung on a tree. Also, He freed me from the slavery of sin. We can find that in John chapter 8, verse 34, 36. Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Let me repeat that. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, He Himself bore our sins in His body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By His wounds you have been healed. Again, by His wounds you have been healed. So how has Christ rescued you from death? Okay? Through His suffering, death, and resurrection, Christ has triumphed over death since He now gives us eternal life. We need not fear death. We can find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55 to 57, it says, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me repeat that. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your string? sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10 says, Our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Again, let me repeat that. Our Savior Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. And in 1 Peter 1, 3 says, According to His great mercy, He has cursed he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let me repeat that. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again 
to a living law of hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. How has Christ rescued you from the power of the devil? Christ has completely conquered the devil. Therefore, the devil can no longer accuse me of my sins and I can resist his temptations. In Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Okay? And in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, it says, The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. And in James 4, 7, Resist the devil and he will, be, he will flee from you. Okay? With what has Christ redeemed you? Okay? Christ has redeemed me not with gold or silver, but with His holy, precious blood, and with His innocent suffering and death. In Isaiah chapter 53, 5, it says, And with His stripes, stripes we are healed. And in 1 Peter 1, 18-19, it says, Knowing that you were trans transformed, from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. Let me repeat that. But with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. And then in 1 John 1, 7, the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. How does this work of redemption benefit you? Okay, how does it benefit you? Christ was my substitute. He took my place under God's judgment against sin. By paying the penalty of my guilt, Christ atoned or made satisfaction for my sins. That is vicarious atonement. In Isaiah 53, verses 4 to 5, Surely, He has borne our grips and caused our souls. Yet we esteemed Him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon Him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with His stripes we are healed. Okay, that's a repetition. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, for our sake, He made Him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. Okay? Let me repeat that. For our sake, He made Him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. And in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17, Therefore, He had to be, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiations for the sins of the people. Again, let me repeat that. Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. And finally, how has Christ redeemed you? Christ has redeemed all people from sin. That is universal atonement. Christ has redeemed all people from sin. Second Corinthians 5.15 He died for all. Again, He died for all. And then 2 Corinthians 5.19 In Christ God was reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And then 1 Timothy 1.15 The saints trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. That is St. Paul. And in 1 John 2.2 2, 
He is the propitiation for our sins, and not ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Okay, let me repeat that. He is, so Jesus Christ, is the propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for all the sins of the whole world. And finally, 2 Peter 2.1, it says, They even deny the Master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. So those are the words of God in connection with our story, friends, again. Okay, let us go back to our reflection. How often do you describe your relationship with God as one of friendship? Again, how often do you describe your relationship with God as one of friendship? And to, in practical terms, how is your friendship with Him going today? In practical terms, how is your friendship with Him going today? Any question? Okay, if there is none, let us pray. God, thank you for loving me, all of us, when, I, when we were still your enemy. I repent of everything. We repent of everything that disappoints us, disappoints you, and celebrate being your friend. That disappoints you, and celebrate being your friend. So we are friends again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Okay? Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have benefited by our morning devotion. Thank you.